Now, when you have this stimulated emission of radiation, one photon comes in and two photons are given out. Now, these two photons can travel, and perhaps those two photons could maybe produce another four photons, because each one of these could then cause its own stimulated emission. And these four go off and then cause eight. And very soon, what you get is this basically huge amount of photons given off, because you have this kind of massive increase in photons given off. And that's what we want inside a laser. We want a huge amount of photons given off that we can then direct and kind of, uh, you know, use them for, for uses. But that doesn't happen very easily. And what we've got to think about is something called pumping the situation and, uh, or sorry, pumping the system, and also something called population inversion to make this favourable. So uh, let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. OK, so let's look at what happens. You might have a photon that goes near to an atom, and the atom uh, basically doesn't do anything. It doesn't absorb the photon. The photon moves past it, and then it moves out the other side. So one photon comes in, one photon goes out. The other thing that might happen is that if you have a, a, an atom which is perhaps in its ground state, then one uh, photon goes in, it's absorbed by the atom, the electron moves up an energy level, and then nothing comes out. Now the third thing that we've just seen and I've just talked about is this uh, stimulated emission, where one photon comes in, it hits an atom which is excited, and then what you get is you get two photons out. So basically, you can have two photons out, one photon out, or nothing. Now, this is where there's a little bit of a problem. If you have a huge amount of atoms and you start sending uh, photons in, if you start uh, having these photons hitting excited atoms, they all start giving out lots of photons, but then you have more atoms in the ground state because the electrons have jumped back down that uh, energy level. Uh, and that means when you have more photons, these photons will then be absorbed. And effectively, overall, this is what happens. For every three photons that come in, three photons come out. You don't have that cascading effect, where, which is what you need. We need lots and lots of photons being emitted. Uh, and this is where we need to think about uh, how we can actually kind of um, do something clever with our physics uh, in order to kind of get laser light out. Remember, laser stands for the light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. And what we want to do is this part here, we stimulate um, excited atoms to give out even more photons. Now what I've got here is something that represents the number of atoms at different energy levels. And effectively we can think of N1 as being the ground state and N2 as being the excited state. Now, and it all really depends on the ratio of uh, the number of atoms at N1 to the number of atoms at N2. Now, at the moment, what I've got here is, you know, I've got eight things here, but this is just going to represent maybe billions of atoms. And at the moment, all of these are at the ground state. What does that mean? Well, that means if a, a photon comes in, what's it going to do? It's probably going to be absorbed, because as it comes in, it gets absorbed by one of the atoms and it moves up to a higher state and it becomes excited. So basically, uh, if you have another one come, coming in, well, it can see there's one there or seven there, so it's more likely to be absorbed by one of these. And the same if we have this one over here, so that maybe another photon comes in. Is it going to excite one of these to give out more photons? Well, probably not. It's probably going to be absorbed by one of these low energy things. And effectively, if N1 is bigger than N2, we're looking at this state over here. Most of the atoms are in the ground state, and therefore for the photons that come in, they get absorbed and none of them come out. What we really want is we want something where actually N2 is bigger than N1. If N2 is bigger than N1, like we have maybe here now, now we've got 6 to 2, if you've got uh, a photon that comes in, it's more likely to interact with the, the kind of the larger population. And if this interacts with this one here, perhaps, well, this one's going to drop down and then two photons are going to come out. And this is what we want. This is when you get that stimulated emission of radiation. If N2 is bigger than N1, what we say is that we have a population inversion. And when you have a population inversion, because there's more excited atoms than unexcited, every time you have a photon coming in, it causes one of these to drop down, and then it gives out... Again, uh, it doubles the amount of photons, and then you kind of get this increase in photons, which is what we need. So this thing here is what we want. Now the problem is, as you can start to see, if you have um, a big number at the top, as photons come in, it tends to put them down. And what eventually happens is that with something like this, N2 tends to equal N1. 
because you tend to have the same amount of things on the top and the bottom. If there's more things on the bottom, it tends to make things go to the top. If there's more things on the top, they tend to come down to the bottom. And eventually, overall, what you get is that for every three photons in, you get three photons out. And again, this doesn't really help. And what we need to look at is uh, what we call a three or a four kind of level system. And what we can then do is something called pumping. And pumping of light is when you put uh, light in and you're effectively pumping energy into the system to raise things up to an excited state beforehand. I hope that makes sense. I've got another video coming up that really looks at why we use uh, three and four level kind of things to get this population version to actually have uh, a huge amount of photons given out in lasers.